I would like to welcome you to our Wednesday evening service at Rancho Christian Center. It is a blessing to be with you, a blessing to be in your home or in your car, or wherever you happen to be listening to this tonight. Uh, we thank God for our times together. Uh, we're looking forward to the days when we can see each other face to face, but until then, uh, be diligent about listening and walking in the things that God has asked you to do. Uh, I also want to uh, say tonight, I hope you moms had a wonderful Mother's Day. Uh, there's, there's nobody more precious to us than our moms or those wives that we have that uh, take care of the kids, get up, cook all the food, uh, clean up all of our messes, but more than that, they love us unconditionally. So I want to say to the moms out there, you are wonderful. I want to say to that one mom uh, that's in my home right now, to Linda, uh, you're the best and just want to thank you for all that you've done in my life, all that you've done for our kids and the joy that I have to come home to you every day. So I just had to shout that out to my, uh, to, to my wife. So tonight as we start, I want to go to Philippians chapter 4 and I'd like to just open in prayer. Father, tonight uh, as we are here, would you meet us? We can't do anything without your Holy Spirit. We can't uh, walk with you, we can't walk into, into places of hope and faith and breakthrough. We can't walk out of the past into the future without all that your Spirit does in our life. So tonight we ask you, Holy Spirit, to join us and lead us. Fill every home where people are. Let your presence overcome any disappointment or discouragement or discontent. Let your presence come now and touch every heart. And we thank you for meeting with us and being here tonight. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can shout amen on that side of the TV screen and uh, just to encourage others who are in the room. You ever sitting there listening to these messages and you kind of look over at your wife? You know you should have shouted amen, but it just was a little bit odd or a little bit different. So I want you to do that. You know, that'll just cause them to wake up a little bit. Maybe the kids in the other room are going to say, what is going on? And you can say, you know what? We're still having church and uh, we're going to still plug in and be a part of that in our everyday life. So tonight, uh, as we're in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, I agree with the Apostle Paul as I'm standing before you today. He's saying, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, and this is from Linda and I and the rest of the pastoral staff to you tonight. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. Here's Paul. He definitely had an affection and a love for all of the Philippian people. But he just said, you know, I, I, he said, stay true to the Lord. And he said, I long to see you, my friends. And so we, we pray that the day's coming when we'll get to spend time together, see each other face to face. Until then, keep calling, keep texting, keep going on Facebook, keep reaching out to people who may feel just a little bit alone or distant in these times. Let them know the body of Christ is still alive and well. So uh, let's continue with that. Paul said, you know, my crown that I'm going to receive in heaven uh, for my work, he said, it's you. We used to think it's this big mansion. It's this uh, pile of gold in heaven, or it's something that we amass on earth, all these rewards that are all of a sudden given to us. You know, here's your kingdom where we go off. But you know what it's going to be is people. All of the reward is going to be the lives of people touched by you. The lives of people blessed by you, encouraged by you. That's what he said. You know, he said, you're my crown that I'm going to receive one day. And so, but he went on to say, I received that for my work. So between now and heaven, I want to encourage you that it's going to take a little bit of work. So the title of my message tonight is called Roll Up Your Sleeves. If you could take a, a, a moment in Philippians 4, uh, roll up your sleeves wherever you're going. I don't want to do it. You know, I got this farmer tan going on. But where you are at home, roll up your sleeves just in uh, getting into the message with me just a little bit. It may seem out of place or out of time as you are at home. And we're going to talk a little bit about work tonight. But you know what? God, he, he never stops working. And uh, in some way, I, I, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to use me tonight 
to help prepare you for the next season the church is going to walk into. I pray that as we take steps out of our homes, God's going to see your spiritual sleeves rolled up. He's going to see a determination inside of your life, inside of your heart to say, you know what? It's time to go out. It's time to get something done. It's time to take all of that energy that I've been just building up day by day, all of those times of prayer, and it's just going to burst out onto this generation that needs to see the church so clearly. Philippians chapter 2, if you go back a couple of chapters, Philippians chapter 2 says, Dear friends, you know, Paul was in love with the Philippians, but he says, Dear friends, you always followed my instruction when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it's even more important. I think as, as, as you have walked as a part of this church, or maybe this is the first time you're watching this, if you come here, you'll find out that we've had instruction over the years. And we would, we would walk into church, we would see the big smile of Brother Will, we would hear the worship in the background, we would have our ushers at the front just welcoming people in. And what it did was that it, it, it was instruction that we received on how to love the Lord, how to be healed, how to walk in fellowship and in hope and encouragement. I can't tell you the times I've come to church one way and walked out completely in a better way. And so as Paul is saying, he says, I, I, as I was with you, when I was with you, and he says, and now that I'm away, it's even more important. So just as you received many things from the times of being in church, you need to go back into those suitcases. You need to go back into those notes that you have uh, in your Bible or in, 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 your, in your iPad or whatever it is. And you need to pull those things out and follow that instruction. God doesn't put things in our life so that it's just a moment. It's like, you know, eating, a, eating an ice cream sandwich, eating something. It's just there for a moment. It's gone. He wants the word to go in you. He wants you to take notes about it. He wants you to write in your Bible because he wants you to remember the things that you learn in this house. So Paul is saying the same thing to the Philippians. He's saying it's even more important now that you follow my instructions. So if you've heard the word of God here, if you've been encouraged by worship as you come into the house, I, I'm just asking you, go back over those things. Let them live inside of you as God is preparing us for this incredible time when the church goes forward. So he goes on from there. He says, and this is Philippians 2, 12. And he goes on from there and he says, work hard to show the results of your salvation. And tonight is, is about rolling up your sleeves. So I'm going to talk about working. So if you have worked all day or, you, or you're a mom, you've taken care of those kids all day. Now you're the teacher because school isn't open. You know, just, just rest right now. But I want you to hear what the scripture has to say about working hard. Work hard to show the results. Now the results of your wife working hard, uh, uh, preparing dinner, is that it sits on the table. The, the, the work is already done. It's already, uh, the results are something that's been complete. And I want to tell you, we who are Christians have received love. We've received forgiveness. We've received the good news from God. And now he says, work hard to show these things. We're not working hard to be born again. We're not working hard to be forgiven. We're working hard because of what we've received. We're working hard because of, we got a bag of seed. As Jesus said, I'm going to give you a bag of money. I'm going to give you one coin. I'm going to give you three coins. I'm going to give you five. He says, now take that and go out and invest that. Take that and go out and plant that in the ground. And he said, he said in that, I want you to work hard to show the results of your salvation. There's a reason that God called you, and uh, he wants us to bring those results to the world. The world is looking for answers. The world is looking for the outcome of this time, and they're, they're tired. I mean, they're sitting in their home. You know, alcohol sales are up. Uh, people buying marijuana sitting in their homes, getting stoned is up, right? They're, they're just doing things. They're doing home improvements. Some are good. Some are bad in this time. But I'll tell you, they're waiting to see the results of what God has done in your life. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. We, we have to understand that He isn't uh, just telling you to go out and do something, and then he, at the end of the day, checking back to see how you do. He's working in you. He's giving you desire. So when you wake up in the morning and you want to meet with Him, 
It's because he gave you the desire. When you are driving in your car and all of a sudden a worship song comes or you look at a community and then his word begins to come out of you, all of a sudden you're thinking about a friend or a family member, somebody in your life. It's because his desire has entered into your heart through the Holy Spirit. He says, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. He's not only wanting to put a desire in you that there's no way to get to. There's no way to reach it. But what he says is, I give you the desire, but I also give you the power. So when he gives you the power, it comes from the Holy Spirit. It's something that stirs us up. It's something that makes you want to roll up your sleeves. Something that makes you get up out of the place that you're in and say, God, I want to be in a different place. So if you're there tonight saying, my desire is very little for the things of God, I want to ask you to begin praying. I want to ask you to begin to say, God, I want you working in my life. Lord, I want, I want to ask you to put desires in me that I never had before. Desires that you want to fulfill. Desires that you want to give me power to carry out. And sometimes the world is kind of drunk on power. You know, you have these corporate things. You have this manipulation in the workplace. You have people that are, are, are just trying to uh, fulfill their own destiny. But you know, Paul, as he's talking to the Philippians, he says, you're my friends. Go show the results of what God has done because he's given you a desire and he's given you the power to do it. And he goes on from there and he says, do everything without complaining and arguing. Those are two things that are going to shoot down every desire that he puts in you. Because if it's not quite what you want to do, or we begin arguing over that, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time there because you all know what I mean. When we begin to complain and argue with people, now we're not doing the will of God. Now we're not walking in and, and, and able to show the results of our salvation because that's all people hear. So I'm going to go on from there. Mark 16, uh, let, me, let me finish that in verse uh, Philippians 2, verse 15, I have to say, so that no one can criticize you. Uh, sometimes we're criticized, sometimes, you know, we're rejected, sometimes we're uh, not acknowledged, so many things go on. But when, when we are walking in the desire and the power of God, these things begin to become clear to the people around us. He says, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. You're not going to get away from crooked and perverse people. Um, I would say like you and me before Jesus. They're just going to always be there. Those people are not walking in the straight path. Those are people that are, are annoying. Those are people that are, that are, you know, just going out at night, coming in in the morning all hung over. These are crooked and perverse people. But you know what? I was one of those people. I, I had to hear the good news about Jesus. Somebody had to show me the result of what it would be like to live for God, what it would be like to really be free from an addiction, what it would be like to really be forgiven, what it would be like to not walk uh, in fear and condemnation and all of those other things. I saw with my own eyes the results of somebody's salvation. And you know, as a result of that, I made a choice to go from the crooked and the perverse to the blessed. So tonight, as you're there, you might be on both sides. You might be sometimes over here with God, walking in His desire and power, and other times you might be over here a little crooked and perverse. It's, 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 it's what He was talking about in this time, that He wants us to follow His instruction. God wants us to follow His instruction, and He'll lead us out of those places. You can see that happening in, the, in, the, in Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, I hope you have your Bible right there and you're, you're looking through with me. Mark chapter 16, uh, this book you'll never go wrong. Mark chapter 16, after Jesus, um, verse 9, after Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, can you say hallelujah a little bit louder? After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene. And it says, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. It seems like every time Mary Magdalene is mentioned, the next thing is, is that seven demons came out of this woman. I have to say, because, you know, Jesus had a lot of followers. He healed a lot of people. And there was a lot of deliverance that went on. But in Mary's case, she was the first one at the tomb. She was radically changed. But this, 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 the, the statement about her life, the event that marked her life was that there seven demons came out of this woman. 
Now, we don't know if that was a result of abuse, unforgiveness, fear, uh, neglect. We have no idea really how she arrived at that place. But I want to tell you, Jesus was working hard. And we don't know the story behind Mary in, in great detail, but Jesus was working hard to see her set free. You see, Jesus saw more. He saw more in Mary than what Mary saw in Mary. Sorry about that little emotion over this situation because all of us can recognize Jesus sees what we can't see. He hears what we can't hear. Jesus saw Mary way ahead. He didn't see her with seven demons tormenting her life. He saw her coming up to him at the resurrection day. He saw her as a part of the disciples that would go out and share the good news about him. He saw her buying spices and bringing them to anoint his body that was raised from the dead. I want to tell you, Jesus wants to keep working in your life. Jesus sees this Mary in you. He sees, he doesn't see your addiction. He doesn't see the, the, the lies that we, we walk in from time to time. He doesn't see the sin that we, we just uh, believe that's all that we are. But he sees beyond that. He says, because my, my, my cross, the blood of my cross, it paid for that. The blood of my cross has power to break that. So he sees so much more than what you do. And every time you read about Mary, I want you to remember that this is the one that Jesus cast out seven demons. Was it all at the same time? Was it all one, one grateful morning in church? Or was it one after another as she would open her heart and allow this deep work of God to set her free. So I want to tell you, no matter what the course is, something great and dramatic or one day at a time, letting God take out fear, letting God take out unforgiveness, letting God take out an addiction in an area of your life, and you'll find yourself with Mary standing at the tomb, seeing him face to face. And so I want to tell you, there's just great power, great power going on as we allow the Lord to work in our lives. Uh, Paul w was working with others, as you see in the, in the book of Philippians. I'm kind of making this my text because it's so rich with, with people that he loves. Philippians 4, uh, going on into verse 2, he says, Now I appeal to Iodia and Syntyche. He says, Please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. Although you roll up your sleeves, it doesn't make everything wonderful. Although you roll up your sleeves, it doesn't mean everybody's going to agree with you. There's going to be disagreements in the body of Christ. There's going to be disagreements in your home between you and your wife or your husband, your kids. But what Paul is saying, he says, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreements. There's things that God has asked you in this time of quarantine to work out. There's people that he's brought to your mind say, will you call that person up? Will you call Paul up and tell him, man, the last time we were together, I was so discouraged. I felt like I really, uh, you know, didn't really care for you as a brother like I should. And I, and I just left. I should have prayed for you. I saw things going on at your home and in your life. And, I, and, you know, and so all of a sudden, we take away what the devil wants to do to keep us separate. Because when we come back together, the blessing is going to come from the unity of the church. The blessing is going to come when the church is walking in one accord. And when we are looking at these areas of disagreement, even one to another, will come together and our hearts are going to be united as one. He says, ask, uh, he says, and, and I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women. You might be used right now in this time of preparation to help people come back to God, to help people get over an, an area of offense or discouragement. So as we're rolling up our sleeves, know that these things will come. And, and so after we have this time of, of helping people out, you see what Paul said, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. Paul was remembering Euodia and Syntyche, and he was, he was remembering how hard they worked. But you know, they had some problems, right? And so just because you have problems with people, don't stop working hard. Don't stop uh, trying to see this relationship go deeper and deeper, but trust that the Lord's gonna work it out. He said, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. I gotta tell you, I want that. I wanna learn how to work hard in telling 
people about the good news. I don't want it to be a casual observance. I don't want it to just be something that, well, when I have time or, or if, it's, uh, if, it's, if it's the right occasion or God has to ask me four times, I just want to work hard at it. You know, I want to be the first one when he says, is there anybody here who will go over and share the gospel? I, I would like to be the first one just, just because we make a commitment to work hard. He said, they worked hard alongside of Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Paul had people, he inspired people around him. As you work hard, as you are in your job, as you are in your home, as you wake up each day and you say, Lord, I'm rolling up my sleeves to walk with you. I want to be one of those people that work hard in telling others the good news. People are going to watch you. They'll become co-workers. People will come into this church and they'll say, you know, I was a little bit late because I stopped and shared the gospel with people. And as a matter of fact, I got about five people in my car who were just looking for a great church to come to. You're, you're working hard. You know, when I show up and I just got my coffee and I got no, no souls, well, that's not fair. But, you know, you, we all show up. There's just something I want to I get to the other side of that where I say, God, we've been working hard. And then I got five people in my car plus my coffee. You know, it's just, it's just working together uh, for good. He goes on from there. Uh, where he says, whose names are written in the book of life. But remember, your, your story's already been written by Jesus. Your story is already something that he's just hoping every day you unfold what he's created, what he's called you to be. The voice that he is speaking uh, is, 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 is the voice that says, I know your future. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. And we have to be willing to work hard to know those plans. So, uh, I, I have with me right here uh, a little story, and it's associated to this, what you would call a washcloth. Uh, when, when we have an opportunity and a blessing to go into Zimbabwe, you, you find yourself surrounded by people that are working hard. You find yourself uh, coming into services where people uh, are struggling with a lot of things. And so the preachers, the pastors, the, the, the worship teams, a lot of times you're looking up. It's not always because it's really hot, but those people, <laughs> they're sweating, you know, and they're like doing all of this and they're, they're going on with whatever they, they need to. But one time I, 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 I was watching Pastor Peter and he said to me, he said, Bob, what you, need to, what you need to understand is that the church needs to work hard. If you've been given a point of responsibility in the church, you need to work hard at preaching the gospel. And then, uh, because I was, I was talking to him about that one day. And so the next day, it so imp impressed me that we have to make a decision to do this. I was preaching in church. And then, and then as I'm preaching, uh, you know, I'm sweating and going on. Well, you know, this uh, dear lady in the church, one of the grandmas there, she walks up with this very handkerchief and she says, Pastor, keep working hard. And, and she reached out and she handed this to me. And it's something when I get tired, when I get discouraged, I hear the Holy Spirit say, let's work hard at preaching the gospel. And so as I was coming in today, um, I had an opportunity to see our brother Will. And uh, as we were just discussing things in the kingdom, and before I told him about my message, he has this great testimony about this time that we are in in regards to quarantine and this COVID issue. And brother Will, come and share what's on your heart. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for uh, giving me this time just to share. But yes, it, I came and I, when I was telling him is that um, a few weeks back, you know, God was just really dealing with me and I was dealing with a lot of stuff and, and about just being quarantined and, and um, you know, God was really placing in, in me that he was telling me that I need to start praying more. I need to start worshiping more. I need to start uh, really stepping into what God has given me with my talents. And many of us have talents out there, but we really need to start uh, pressing into them. But he was just really pressing into me that this is what I want you to do. You see, when everything started, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't start worshiping like God has made me a worshiper. And so, it, you know, when this whole, you know, stay at home happened, I wasn't worshiping like I, like I should have been. And God started just putting that in my heart and saying, this is what I want you to do. And so he said specifically, what I want you to do is I want you to read. And then after you read, I want you to pray. And then after you pray, I want you to worship. 
And as I was telling Pastor Bob, I said, you know, this past couple of weeks, I've been just worshiping and I've been sweating because I, <laughs> not because of the heat, but because I'm just worshiping so hard because I just want to, <laughs> thank you, I just want to just worship and worship. And I just couldn't believe it. And God was just, and I was, I was worshiping over my family. I was worshiping over my job. I was worshiping uh, over my house uh, and, and, and over the church and everything that we're going to. And I was just telling Pastor Bob that I can't wait till we get back because I I believe every single one of us has a talent out there that we can just start working at. See, God has given every single one of us a certain talent, and, and, and he's given us to, to work at it. And all we got to do is just listen and be obedient. And one of the key things is just to read and then start exercising your talent. Whether your talent is to pray, whether your talent is to intercede and pray, or whether it's to worship, uh, whatever it is God's uh, given you the gift of, He's saying, I want you to work at it because it's going to be so much more. And when you listen to God, I'm telling you, these last couple of weeks, my daughter came downstairs uh, just the other day and, and she says, you know, Dad, because I, I, I do this early in the morning. I do this real early in the morning. And, and my, uh, my daughter McKenna came down. She goes, I love waking up, hearing you worship. And that meant so much to me because that's what I needed to start doing, to be working at it. So I encourage every single one of you out there, just like what Pastor Bob is saying, just you, you work at it, and it's not hard. It really isn't. All we got to do, wherever you're at, I know that as a head of my household, this is what I started doing, and, and, and you fathers out there, our husbands out there, you know, always remember we're a pastor of our own home first. And for you single mothers out there too, you, you're a pastor of your home as well. Amen. So. Amen. Thank you, Will. Very clear, very clear. That's why it, when he spoke that, it just, it, it, it touched my heart because that's the practical Jesus, right? Um, it isn't about coming just to church. It isn't about standing here and preaching or being on the worship team or it's the everyday Jesus. Remember, he wants to give you the desire and the power. I was thinking about um, Exodus 35:30 if you're taking notes there, because it is, it's at home, it's at work, and, and in all you do, he has anointed you. I want you, to, I want you to think about that. At work, at home, and in all you do, he has anointed you. And that's for a reason. In Exodus 35, there's a man that rises to the surface that has always been one of those that I've admired. Because like, like you, we, we, you know, we're working. We're, we're, we're earning an income, we're, we're going out, we're coming in, or you're at home taking care of kids, or you do, you're, you're doing your business from your home, whatever it is. But Exodus 35, verse 30 says this, Then Moses told the people of Israel, The Lord has specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur of the tribe of Judah. Okay, this guy was this guy was well known. The Lord has filled Bezalel with the Spirit of God. Listen to this. This this is an amazing testimony that I believe when you talk about desire and power that God wants to give you. The Lord has filled Bezalel with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He is a master craftsman expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood. He is a master at every craft. You know, for those of you who have ever tried to build something, put something together, paint something, you know, work on the car, whatever it is, this, this man, Bezalel, it says the Lord had filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise. You know, church, I am waiting for this to break out among Christians. Those who are willing to work hard. This guy uh, was, was blessed with the opportunity. Moses goes to the mountain. He sees exactly what, how God wants to build the tabernacle. He gives those plans to be Zalel. He says, I'm going to do it. And he goes and he builds the first meeting place where God met with Moses and where God would meet with Israel. I tell you, this was, a, this was a guy that definitely devoted his heart and his life to the Lord. But I'll tell you, it happened because the Lord filled him with the Spirit of God. So today you might be there. How do I roll up my sleeves? How do I make a difference? Begin to pray for desire. 
Begin to say, God, and in my desire, would you fill me with your power? Because when we come out of the other side of this, or maybe you're, maybe you're going back to, to work right now. Maybe you've been at work and you're wondering, God, I want to make a difference. You start praying these things. You start believing what God believes about you. You start recognizing you may be that Mary. Today, it may seem like, man, I'm just tormented in in seven different ways. But tomorrow, you might be the one beholding Jesus. And he is looking at you saying, Mary. And you have that opportunity then to continue on as a disciple in great revelation of the Lord. So I just want to thank you for spending time with us. You can uh, roll your sleeves back down so nobody thinks you're just going to go start a fight when you get done with all of this. But I want to tell you, do practical things in this time and allow the Holy Spirit to prepare you to walk in His desire and to walk in the power that He gives for you to accomplish it. I want to thank you for spending this time with us. The Lord bless you and we'll look forward to seeing you as soon as we can. Amen.